Welcome to United with Christ. My name is Pastor Sergio uh, Torres from a beautiful church, Somos Church. And uh, today we're talking about how love lives here. So I hope that you tune in, enjoy the message, and that you would be encouraged to know that God is doing something in your life. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Welcome to United with Christ. My name is Sergio Torres. I have the incredible uh, privilege and honor to serve as the pastor at Somos Church. Uh, we are a four-year-old church that meets currently at Cielo Vista uh, Cinemark. We rent out that theater every single Sunday in the morning time. Uh, if you would like to come and have church in a movie theater, you're always uh, welcome. Uh, we meet at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And God is doing incredible things uh, through just meeting at a movie theater, having church, worshiping God right there. And hey, we have comfortable seats, so you want to check that out. Uh, another incredible thing just to share with you that's happening in our church community, it is... Uh, uh, Easter's coming up, and that is the most exciting time of the year. As followers of Jesus, we're celebrating that Jesus came to this world. He died for us, and he didn't stop there. He came back to life to give us brand new life, new beginnings, a new grace, new mercy, new purpose. So we're celebrating big, I hope, at your church in our church, but one of the fun things that we're doing uh, on, on the 30th is it is that we are renting out Memorial Park, uh, the corner of Copper and Copia, uh, and we are going to have an incredible time for the kids. We're doing a family outreach. We're doing a Somos Easter Egg Hunt at 4 p.m. You're more than welcome to bring your family. It's a free event for our community. Uh, we're going to have over 3,000 Easter eggs. We're going to share the message of Jesus. We're going to have jumping balloons, obstacle courses, food, and a whole lot of fun. I uh, hope that you can make it. Hey, today, if you need prayer, we have our prayer line always open to serve you, to pray with you, to believe with you for whatever it is that you're going through, you're believing for, you can always call at 915-532-8518. Well, thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, March, it is a beautiful month. We celebrate Easter. Uh, we are celebrating what God has done in our lives. And, you know, throughout this month, as we've been preparing and praying and just really reminiscing and all the things that God has done uh, in our lives, this beautiful thought came uh, to mind. And I feel it is this thought, but more than anything, I sense it as a declaration that God is encouraging us to have. And that is that love lives here. I don't know where you're at right now, where you're tuning in, but can I just invite you to say that out loud? There's there's so much power when we say things out loud. Could you just say uh, out loud, love lives here. And what a profound declaration in the midst of some darkness that you might be facing, in the midst of you going through some circumstances in your life, in the middle of always going through some cycles and some battles. I believe that as followers of Jesus, when we take a stand and we just say and declare, hey, love lives here. Today, love lives here. Can you just imagine, could you dream with me for a second? 
what would your house look like if we believed who God is? If we believed who God is, if we believe who Jesus is, if we believe who the Holy Spirit is and the power of his word, what would happen if we believed all the principles and beauty and truth of who God is. And we live that out on a daily basis. I love that Jesus, he inhabited heavens and he came to live here on planet earth. He embodied himself as a human and he took a stand and he said, hey, humanity, now love lives here. Then he took it a step further. He rose to heavens. And now the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. So when we are saying love lives here, we're partnering up with the truth of heaven. And we are saying that today, God is alive on the inside of us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. His spirit is alive and active on the inside of you and I today. So friend, can I encourage you to make this declaration over your life can you remind yourself and the enemy that love lives here and when love lives here come on darkness flees fear flees worries flees stress flees because we have the creator of heaven and earth on the inside of us how different would our homes look like if we just declared and lived out that love lives here. How different would our work life look like if we step into our work environment and we said, hey, love lives here. What would happen in our marriages, in our parenting, if we would live like love lives here? How different our community our schools, our neighborhoods, how different would our city look like if there was some believers that rose up, that took a stand, and they would say, love lives here. I, 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 I am praying, I am believing that our city, that El Paso, Texas, would live this out, that we would impact through the love of Jesus our city and that the whole nation and that the whole world would take a notice and they would look at what is happening in that city. What's happening is that followers of Jesus are believing, are declaring, are walking out the love of Christ in their lives in a daily basis and we're seeing revival, not in a city. We're seeing revival in homes, in families and marriages with parents and sons and daughters come on can you believe with me that we can be a city that we can be a community that we can be people men and women that say love lives here and we live that out now why love why out of the many things that we could talk about, about the qualities of Jesus and the character of Christ and who God is, why am I choosing to talk about love? It's plain and simple. Love is profound. Love is powerful. But 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, that anyone who does not love does not know God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Friends, the Bible says that God is love. So when you're feeling apart from God, when you're feeling lonely and depressed, whenever we go through those valley lows in life that we are questioning a whole lot of things and we have doubts and struggles and challenges, 
can I encourage you to lean on, not your, on your own understanding, not on knowledge, but can you lean on love? Because God is love. Now, the challenge here, and I would prayerfully ask you to consider this, is that this scripture is telling us that anyone who does not love does not know God. And if I'm quite honest, that breaks my heart a little bit because if there's one thing that followers of Jesus, one thing that Christians and churches are known by, it's not by their love. Sometimes... Followers of Jesus are known by judgment, criticism. We are known by division. We're known by conflict. We are known by not being in agreement with others and having a lot of disagreements. And here, Scripture is plain and simple. It's telling us that if we don't love, We don't know God because anyone who loves knows God because God is love. Now, I'm not saying here that you have to agree with everyone about everything. What I'm saying, though, is that despite our differences, despite our disagreements, despite our different points of views and styles and theology and doctrine, despite that we are united because of the love of God, because God is love. I pray that this year our city would be known for love. This year where we have elections coming and it's a point of contention, I pray that there would be a remnant of followers of Jesus that we take a stand that we say we are going to be known for our love because God is love. This is a beautiful challenge for us to be loving, for us to live out love in our homes, in our marriages, in our parenting, in our workplace with the boss that you might disagree or not like, with your supervisor, manager, co-workers, with employees, come on, in your school, with teachers, wherever you're at in life. Can I encourage you to love? Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 says, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Can can I just ask you uh, for a second, have you ever been offended? Uh, Come on. Have you ever been offended by a leader, by a pastor, by a church, by a brother, a sister, family member? Have you ever been offended by something that you see on social media or Facebook? Have you ever seen a family member having a party that you were not invited and you see it on social media and you're like, I wasn't invited and you get offended and you don't talk to them for God knows how long? Have you ever been offended? Have you ever been wronged? Have you ever had some injustices happen in your life. I know I have many times. But the Bible gives us the medicine, the antidote, the solution to that. Love covers all offenses. And I know it's challenging and I know it's hard to hear and I know it's so hard to embrace but isn't that why the truth of God sets us free because it confronts our flesh so when God tells us hey if you are offended today you're called to love because love will cover all offenses first John Chapter 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love. God's love cast out fear. If you are feeling fearful today, if you are sitting wherever you're at, you're listening to this, watching this, wherever you're at, And you know there's some real fears that you're facing today. 
There's some fears about tomorrow. There's some fears in your finances. There might be fears in your marriage and your family. There might be some real fears that you are dealing with today. God's love comes into our lives and it casts out fear. Can I encourage you to live a fearless life? Can I encourage you to not get used to living in fear because his perfect love cast out fear? Can you dream with me? What would your life look like? What would your life look like if we had the love of God active in our lives and through our lives. I believe that there's a story in the Bible that kind of gives us a glimpse of how this love active in our lives would look like. And it is found in Mark chapter two, verse one. I believe that there was four men that caught the love of God active in their lives. I believe that there was four men that they got a glimpse of the love of God and they knew that now that love lived in them. So these four men, they go and they get a friend. Mark chapter two, verse three, these four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above their head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus, seeing their faith. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. I believe this is a glimpse into who God wants for us to be. I believe that God is calling us to be like those four men, that they grabbed a paralyzed man. This paralyzed man, I love how broad it is and my mind just works like that. I don't even know if that paralyzed man wanted to be healed. We don't know if that paralyzed man wanted to be brought to the feet of Jesus. But when you catch the love of God, It doesn't matter who says what, your compassion moves you to action. So these four men, they grabbed this paralyzed man and it was inconvenient. It was heavy. It was out of their way. So they grabbed this paralyzed man and they carried him to Jesus. Now, I love that it specifies that whenever they got to Jesus, Verse four, they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. Because of the crowd, they couldn't bring him to Jesus. Now, what I want to propose to you today is that many people can get to Jesus because of the crowd. Many people are desperate for Jesus. They're paralyzed in their faith, in their lives. They need Jesus, but because of the crowd, they can't get to Jesus. And so often we use this as followers of Jesus, as a cop out. We invite people to church, but God doesn't call us to invite people to church. God calls us to invite people into salvation. God calls us to invite people into eternity. God calls us to invite people to the feet of Jesus. Come on, can I encourage you today? I know there's some people that you've invited to church. I know there's some family member, spouse, children, loved ones that you have invited to Jesus, to the church, but because of the crowd, because of the church, they couldn't get there. Come on, God is calling you to go above. Don't use the crowd as an excuse. Don't use the crowd as a cop-out. Don't use the crowd as a means to say, I invited them to church and they didn't want to come God doesn't call us to invite people to church. God calls us to invite them into an eternity with Jesus, into relationship with him. And the beautiful thing about this is that we don't need to bring people to Jesus. Jesus is telling us love lives here. Jesus lives here. You take Jesus to wherever you go. 
That's what we're called to do. But I love how these men, they didn't use, they didn't have any excuses. They didn't see certain limitations as a means to say, that's all we could do. They had initiative. They had, they had creativity. They had tenacity and courage, boldness and strength to say, man, what if we just take this paralyzed man into the rooftop? What if we break the roof and open up a hole and bring this man to the feet of Jesus? I love that they didn't do it only through their strength, but they did all of this with faith. Because Jesus told them, because of your faith, because of the faith of these fourth men, they healed. They they, they healed. Jesus forgave the sins of this paralyzed man. What would your faith do in the lives of those around you? You know, there's um, a friend of mine that, that I had. He was an atheist and he was my best friend. He was my brother. Uh, We did life together every single day. And, And he was an atheist. And to be quite honest, I didn't judge him because of his atheism. I leaned into why he was an atheist. And again, he was my best friend. And I understood his pain and his deep questions and hurts and bitterness and to be quite honest, hate that he had towards God because at a young age, his older brother passed away tragically. So from a young age, he had this hatred towards God and he was a vivid atheist. And I remember one day that I felt the Holy Spirit telling me that I needed to talk to that friend about who Jesus is. And I remember my first thought was like, God, please no. It was like, God, you want me to talk to him? I don't know if you know God, but he doesn't like you very much. Uh, To be quite honest, I was just like, God, I I don't know if I can do it. I I don't want to do it. And I just keep feeling God pulling my heart. So finally, uh, I was like, okay, God, be careful when we argue with God. I pray that in our arguments with God, he always wins. Uh, because I argued with God of why I shouldn't. He's going to punch me. He's going to stop talking to me forever. But again, I just felt God really calling me to talk to this friend. So finally, one day I call him. It's like, hey, can we hang out? Uh, so we went to a park, and I remember that I sat down with him, and I just told him, I love you, and because I love you, I need to tell you that God loves you. I need to tell you that I know it might seem that God is against you, but he's actually for you, and he wants to do something in your life. And what I expected was a punch on the face. But what ended up happening is that he broke down. He started crying. And I led him to Jesus that day. No church, no keyboard, no altar call, just right there. And it was a beautiful and powerful moment that the Holy Spirit came, Jesus came, and he gave his life to God. And and I am forever grateful that I didn't win that argument with God because a couple of months later, uh, he ended up dying tragically. And I thank God that he won the argument, that I obeyed him, that I followed Jesus leading. Because I don't know how I would have lived with myself knowing that I didn't obey God. A couple months later, him being killed. I would encourage you today as we close, who is the Holy Spirit tugging your heart that you need to call, that you need to bring the love of God to them? Who do you cross paths every single day that you need to bring the love of God? Come on, family, let's be followers of Jesus that bring people to the Lord. Can we shift the script and stop making Christianity only about us? Can we turn the lens And can we live our lives for those who are lost, hurting, and broken 
in our city, in our communities, in our schools, in our workplace, in our homes, in our families, in our friendships. It's time for us to declare and live out that love lives here. Let's pray. God, today, I want to pray specifically for those people who are hurting, who are broken. I want to pray today for those who don't know about your love, God. And I pray that you would compel us, God, to bring the love of Christ to those who desperately need them. Use us, Lord. Use us to be a light and to love others. And I pray, God, that we will see in our city, in our homes, in our families, in our friendships, people coming to Christ because we lived out that you live in us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. The prayer line is open. If you need prayer, and I would encourage you today to, let's pray today for those people who desperately need the love of Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in today to United with Christ. Blessings.